Today we have a, a special treat. Uh, my wife Kim is joining me today for the message. Let's welcome Kim to the stage. I know she's excited. She's been working on what she's going to say, and uh, she's been coaching me through what I need to say as well. And uh, so that's uh, been a blessing. Well, today uh, we're excited to talk about a mother's prayer, and we're going to talk about uh, from the Old Testament story of Hannah. And uh, so do you have anything to say, Kim, by way of just introduction to everybody here? Uh, just maybe a word of greeting. Well, I'd like to say good morning to everyone. And I know we've already had church. We could pray and say amen and go out with a full heart. I know I have. That last song just really spoke to me because God is a God of doing the impossible in our life, isn't he? And so I think one of the key elements is what we're going to talk about today, and that is prayer. And God should, within all of our hearts, have that secret place, that place of prayer, that safe place where we go to him and lay out all those things that we're going through. And I might dare say that there are some people in this room today, whether you are mother, father, or both, are going through some things right now that would just break our hearts. And this message is just as much for you today in what Hannah went through, her prayer, her life, her experiences, we can all find some hope and some help from how she handled her circumstances. And so, so I'm going to turn it back over to you. Well, uh, if you don't know the story, Hannah was the mother of the Old Testament prophet Samuel. And uh, just an incredible story. I'd encourage you to read it. Um, Hannah didn't have any kids. And particularly in, that, particularly in that time, that was a real burden for a woman. Um, she just felt like she was abandoned by God. She didn't feel like that she was getting her prayers answered. Well, and she ended up praying, saying to God, if you'll give me a son, I'll give him back to you. That's exactly what she did. Uh, she gave her son back to God and I believe it's a beautiful picture of how we should pray and how we should handle our own children, our own families, by giving them back to God. So, Kim, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read uh, some verses here, and uh, then you and I are going to talk about three different things, okay? And so we're going to talk about, uh, to you, how we as parents should pray for our kids, and when we go through difficulty, how we should do that, okay? All right. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, and then I'll skip down and read verses 19 and 20. There was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim. Aren't you glad you don't live in that city, all right? I don't even know what the zip code would be in a place like that. And it was of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name, the man, was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf. I like that name. Zuf, get over here. Can you imagine that? And he was an Ephrathite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. That's who we're going to talk about today. And the name of the other, uh, Penina. Right? Almost sounds like a bread, doesn't it? And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now, this man, talking about Okana, he used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. And on the day when Elkana sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival, and, and by the way, if you have questions about why multiple wives in the Old Testament, I don't know the answer to that, all right? So uh, you can go ask somebody else on that one. I'm not sure why. Uh, I do know why they did it. I'm not sure, uh, you know. Let me just move on. All right, so... 
But her rival used to provoke her uh, grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year. And as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? And after they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose. And now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. And she was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but you will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head. That meant that he was a Nazarite. And they took vows uh, for a particular time, but he was one of two in the Bible that was, uh, was what we called a perpetual Nazarite. In other words, his entire life, he didn't cut his hair or his beard. Uh, he could not drink wine. He couldn't drink anything of the vine, and he was totally committed to the Lord. And then down verse 19, and they rose early in the morning, worshiped before the Lord, and then they went back to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. All right, Kim, uh, we've got some things we want to talk about in the time that we have here, but... Uh, the word Elkanah, the name, it means God has purchased. So the father represented, I believe here, the grace of God, that God pours out his grace on us even when we go through difficult times. So what is it in your thoughts here and in your life and your experience and your faith that you can say to that, that God gives us grace? even when we go through really, really difficult times? Well, actually, um, there were many years um, that, you know, we had things going on in our family that were difficult, and you have to. You've had things that you've had to walk through, situations, circumstances that were painful, that were sorrowful, that are still sorrowful, that... You are suffering through, but the Bible tells us that as we suffer, we're enduring in him. We're building our faith. We're um, increasing and growing in character when we walk through those struggles, and that's in Romans. But God, as we walk through things in our own personal life, you know, over the years, just as you will and you have, um, God has brought to my remembrance all the times in the past that he was faithful. And I think that it behooves each one of us to count and recount all those times that God has stayed with us, he's been with us, and he remains faithful to us, even in difficulty, even in pain and sorrow that we go through, that he is faithful. And that's been the thing that's carried me through um, the, the times that you know, and, I needed And by the most. way, everybody is going to go through difficulty. This woman went through difficulty, um, and that brings me to the first thing that she prayed to God. Here's what she said. She asked God to see her, to see her. Now, don't raise your hand, but I wonder how many in this room have ever felt unseen. You felt like Nobody recognized you. You felt like no one remembered you. And, and I know in, in your life, in my life, that, uh, and we've talked about this, that there have been many times when you felt kind of unseen. Why don't you speak into that just a little bit? Uh, well, we have to remember that when we're walking through these things, instead of getting on the phone and telling everybody, or we need to go to God's throne. We need to go to God's throne and lay all of those things out before him. Because does he already know? Yes. Is he willing to be there and work and help us? Yes. 
But so many times we take it around and, and we give it to this one. And yeah, empathy's nice and, and sweet and all, but who's the one that can change the thing? Who's the one that can bring it home for us? God, our Father. And so I just want to encourage you, as I encouraged myself after thinking and praying and, and you know, reading about Hannah the past month, you know, um, to take it to his throne. More. He longs for that relationship with us. And one thing about her life that I thought was so incredible was that she already knew God had given her the promise, but she stood in a couple facts that God loved her. The Bible said he not only loved her, he doubly loved her. Can you imagine? What kind of love is that, that God doubly loved her? And that he was always there with her. And she received that promise for herself and she walked in it. She stayed in it. She held it. She kept it. And God used her story as part of a story that can help mothers through generations and generations through Scripture. But the fact that we... I forgot the original question. <laughs> but... Um, but we can go to God our Father and know that he's there. Well, that, that fits into exactly what she prayed, Lord, see me. And God yeah. sees you no matter what you're going through, no matter your difficulty. And by the way, if you have kids, you're going to go through difficult times. I mean, anybody can say amen at that point because amen. if your kids are not in the room, say amen. Look, the fact is... The Bible tells us in Psalm 127, children are a gift from the Lord. And this idea, though, of being a gift from God means that God loans them to us. Did you know that that is what, in the original language, what the prayer that Hannah prayed, that she said, that I've asked of him for, from the Lord, asked from, uh, for the Lord from him. And that means to borrow. What she said, God, is I just want to borrow him for a little while. And I'm going to give him back to you. And that's the way we should look at things as parents. They're just going to borrow my kid from God for a little while. And we prayed that, every one of our kids, we dedicated them to the Lord. And you were saying something the other day that I found interesting about uh, what it says in Proverbs, that train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Now, I grew up in a tradition that believed that meant they would never do anything wrong. You raise them right, they would never sin, but that is not true. That's not what that promise means. So uh, tell us about that a little bit, because you were talking about that the other day, about that when you do right, you pray for them, and you're raising them in church, they may stray, but it's never going to leave them. Right, well... Um, one thing we did when our kids were little coming up was we used teachable moments, things that happened while we were riding in the car, things that happened when we were off on family holiday or visits or just things that would happen, you know, at school and they'd come home and tell us. And we would always point them back to Jesus and um, what the Word of God said. And, but I would encourage you, if you have a young one, a new one coming up, even uh, middle school or high school, uh, teach them about God's Word, what it says about that situation, um, how to respond, how to um, behave, how to handle their situations. And I would say that even as parents, you know, we're not, we're not perfect parents, and um, neither are you. And, um, but God is a perfect God, and God is a perfect parent to us. And when we need guidance... When we need understanding or wisdom in a situation, go to God in that place of prayer. And he will give you the wisdom to handle whatever it comes in your family, with your children, your situation. Um, but teachable moments, um, just having our kids in church, even when it was difficult, um, when Richie was away and I was um, mother and father on the weekend, just making them, you know, be ready Having a good That was when attitude. I was in evangelism. Yeah, he was in that. evangelism. So people know yeah. when I was away, I wasn't in prison or anything. So <laughs> anyway, he 
he was he was away doing ministry and ministering to other um, people and families. But um, I was there to um, take them to church and keep them knowing God and um, those kinds of things. And, and that that was difficult because we oh, talked about about that. It was that. hard because. But certain, that's so important that yes, you do that. Because certain of the children didn't want to do it and didn't see the importance of it. But then mom would have to, you know, say, well, this is why we do it, you know, and that's a teachable moment. But you can grab hundreds and hundreds of teachable moments, and I know you have. But I want to encourage you to remember to do that with your children, with your grandchildren, with your godchildren, with your um, bonus children, um, whatever children that you have in your life and around your life, speak into them, speak God's truth into them, speak God's word into their life, direct them, guide them. And that's kind of what that scripture was talking about in Psalm 127. You're guiding them along the way. We're not making up their mind for them. Uh, a little bit, but <laughs> we're not making up their mind for them, but we're guiding them along the way so that when they are older, they know in their heart. When it says the they truth. won't depart from it, it means it won't leave them. They may not always do what you think they should do. In fact, I'm going to say there's a high likelihood they don't. All right? But it will never leave them. And by the way, these teachable moments, this is a biblical concept. In the book of Deuteronomy, uh, Moses is speaking once again to the nation of Israel right before he dies. And, and he teaches them to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And he talks to them. He says, you teach this to your children when you're walking by the way, when you're going in and out. I mean, just the normal rhythms of life and those teachable moments. I will say this. It's better you teach your kids more about a relationship with God in those moments than you do in church. Now, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't bring your kids to church. You should. I would say you need them in all the programs of the church. You need them uh, here every Sunday. Incredibly, incredibly important. But those teachable moments are incredibly important. You remember this, um, Brandon and I. Him and I have never ridden to church together. We'll be married 37 years this month. That's, that's the secret. That you're Right. <laughs> Um, that's the secret to a long marriage. We avoid each other as much as possible. All right, so. But anyway, we would use these moments. Brandon would ride with me. He was just a little kid. And uh, uh, Brittany and Brooke would ride with you. And we had always talked about the reason you go to church is because you love God. And we were driving through this neighborhood. Brandon, just a little kid, he said, Daddy, he said, why don't all these people go to church? I'm like, well, that's a great question. I said, maybe, maybe they don't love Jesus. I don't know. And he didn't miss a beat. He goes, and yeah, we hate them, don't we, Daddy? I'm like, no, we do not hate them, Brandon. You got to use these teachable moments for them to always point them back to Jesus. Well, Hannah asked God to see her. She gave her child to the Lord, and then I think this is the most important part of this. She committed to raise her kid for God, all right? And so she did. She said, Lord, if you'll give me a kid, I'm going to raise him to follow you. And so I would say this, and I want you to speak into this, Kim. Um, as a parent, don't ever give up. Don't ever stop praying. There may be some people that think that you should give up. There may be some people that say, well, you know, your son, your daughter, um, you know, I don't believe I would keep on praying. And I always say, yeah, but they're not your son or your daughter. And just keep on praying. And so I know you had something you wanted to say about that. Well, um, in regard to uh, never giving up, um, through the different recalling and recanting ways that God has come through, there are about five or six ways that God has uh, brought to my remembrance 
about not giving up. And um, they've regarded health. They've regarded healing. They've regarded um, children who are away. Um, we call it the prodigal in Scripture. Um, and a couple others, you know, that are a little, I hold a little more dear. But God has worked through prayer, through waiting on him. And God gave me this word waiting over the last couple of weeks. And while we are waiting, we don't always wait patiently. But in scripture, those two words kind of connect. That we are to be patient and wait on the Lord. You've heard that scripture, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. So in the waiting, that's our part. We find it hard. God is working. So we're waiting while he's working. She's going to make a preacher before you know it. She may take my job here. I don't know. That was good. No, but All right. During the waiting, God is working. And it's that last song, y'all. Is anything too impossible for him? No. It's in his timing. Our job is waiting, which is the harder piece. Nothing is too hard for him. He's working it out. It's in his timetable. We want to say hurry up. That's not how it goes. But all the time I recount and recall and wait, he is working. And so I just want to encourage you that whatever you're walking through today, um, suffering, sorrow, pain, uh, loss, grief, whatever it is, God is still on the throne. He is still working it out. He's working on your behalf. He's for you. And I just love these promises. In our time of remembering and recounting how he's worked, I'm going to back up and talk about Joshua just a brief second. God led me to Joshua, and I was reading about how the tribes held that stone of remembrance. And years back, I want to say 20, 2009, 2010, 2011, I was praying and believing God for a specific thing. And God said, hold that stone. Keep that stone of remembrance in your hand about how I've worked before, in the past, before in your life. And he brought the thing to pass. It's a few years later. But we got our answer, and we got our prayer answer. But God's got an answer for you. And he just wants you to hold on to the stone and remember how he's worked before, and that he's going to work again in your life. He's not done. Our hardest job is waiting, but to watch him work, it's the miracle that we sang about today. Well, let, we just kind of wrap this up here. Uh, Psalm 127 says that children are a blessing from the Lord, blesses the man, that's the generic Hebrew word for mankind, man or woman, blesses the man, blesses the mom, blesses the dad that has his quiver full of them, like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Now, here's the thing about being a mighty warrior. You've got to get some skill. And that would be something I would encourage you to do as parents, as grandparents, is read some books, listen to some sermons, uh, get some advice on how to parent, how to be a grandparent, all right? Uh, the, the more you uh, work on your skill, the better you're going to be. And then understand this, if the metaphor is true there, and I believe it is, guess what you have to do? If an arrow is going to get to the target, you got to have some skill, you got to point in the right direction, and you got to release it. That's the hard part. Sometimes we don't want to release. And can I give you some advice as a parent? Focus on 
the target, nothing else. We get so bent out of shape because, well, you've been at Christmas for all of your life, and now you're married, and by God, you're not going to miss this year. And we drive our kids away with silly things. Or you're worried about how they vote. Or you're worried about, you know, how many tattoos they have, all right? Uh, Or you're worried about stuff that doesn't really matter. Let me encourage you as a parent, worry about the target. The target is Jesus Christ. The target is a relationship with God, all right? Don't worry about the peripheral things because you know what you're going to do? You're going to drive yourself crazy. You're going to drive a wedge between you and your family, you and your children. So get your eye on the target. Make sure you get some skill because your aim's got to be right and learn to release it and let it go. Let it go, let it go, right? Is that what we're supposed to sing right now? I feel like a Disney movie here. Well, Kim, do you have anything else that you wanted to say today? I just want to encourage everybody um, in your journey, where you're at, wherever that is, just not to give up and keep trusting in our faithful God. Amen. Yes. Well, let me encourage you now. We've been in this series on prayer, and uh, today we're talking about the, a mother's prayer. And I know that many of you are like I was. My mother prayed for me to come to Jesus. She prayed for me to be saved. And that is the most important prayer of all. And I love how that I hear stories from many of you about how you pray for family members or friends, and they come to know Christ. And I want to keep on encouraging you to do that, or encourage you to keep on doing that. And I want to thank you for being faithful. Well, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray now today for all of our mothers and fathers, Lord, that we would honor you, that we'd be like warriors, that we'd be like Hannah, that we realize that we just get to borrow our kids for a while. We got to give them back to you. Help us to be serious about raising our kids in church. Help us to be serious about getting our kids involved. It's so critically important. Help us to be serious about that. I pray for the families of our church. I pray for the children of our church. I pray for the teenagers of our church. God, that you would bless them. And God, help us to follow you with all of our heart. Of course, in Jesus' name I pray and ask all these things. Amen. Let me say this uh, today uh, as we wrap up our service. If you'd like to pray to get saved, maybe online you would pray this. Um, that you would say to the Lord, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross and rose from the grave, and I'm asking you to be my Savior today. And if you'll do that, God promises that he'll save you. If you want to pray that prayer today with me, then you can uh, fill out one of the Next Step cards. And speaking of Next Step cards, uh, we have our Next Step class once a month. You can sign up for that. We have ways for you to be involved. And so I encourage you to take those next steps. Well, Kim, I want to thank you for joining me up here today. Let's give Kim a hand. She did a great job. We hope the message you heard today encouraged you and strengthened you in your walk with Jesus wherever you are. If you know of someone that could use today's message, be sure to share it with a friend and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single message. If you feel led today to give towards the mission and vision, you can do so by clicking the give button on the screen. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.